Well, welcome to The Mentors, episode number 17. Wow. And to the listeners out there, as you know, we've been starting to check in with some of the people that we've already reached out to us this year, Maddie, How are you, buddy? Mate, I'm well, thanks. You're just well. fresh You've back just come from barrel. Barrel. <laughs> fresh. <laughs> Bring the understatement. <laughs> That's why I look a bit sort of frozen here. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll warm up, Clouds, after seeing you. Oh, mate. Well, well, if I can give you something, Maddie, I've got a winter challenge happening at the moment. Oh, good. I'm jumping into the ocean every day during winter. No way. Yep. Yep, I am. And uh, let me tell you, this morning was absolutely freezing. Does that help you, you lose weight? I might come apparently with you. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Build your abuse. There's all some really good up benefits, but I don't know about that. I'm okay. just going in there trying to challenge myself. I think I'm just crazy. Good I'm on just you. crazy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, Maddie, we've got a special guest here in our episode 17 of The Mentors. We welcome back Patrick Cosgrove. Patrick, welcome back. Thanks for having me, guys. Good to be back. Young Woo! gun. <laughs> Patty well, Cosgrove from Rain and Horn Double Bay. <laughs> Young gun Cosgrove. <laughs> so, Patty, you, you joined us back in episode three. Yep. You, you came out here and reached out to us and talked to us a little bit about your marketing plan going yeah. into 2018. So, I thought for the listeners, it's great to check in with some of our past, um, you know, people that have agents that have checked in with us. Um, tell us a little bit about like how things are going for you with your marketing plan because that was really your question. You were trying to understand what could you do this year? Do you spend more digital? You know, we we're talking about print and, and, and Maddie was said printing is dead. Yep. Yep. <laughs> you know, get rid of those DL mm. cards. Um, where are you now? Are yeah, you it's, been, um, it's, it's been a really, really good year. I mean, we've done a lot. I've done a lot with Sprinkle Meter actually as well with Clinton. Um, we've shot a lot of videos and stuff. Yeah, do, I think. do we get do we get a little handout for you? Being do, I, do I get the hat? Make an introduction hat? back here in episode three. <laughs> Yeah, it, um, it's it's gone really, really well. Like I think just about every property I've put online, we've shot a, a, a property video for, which has been really good. Um, and we've linked that back to my website. So you can actually tell the difference between the inquiries from from the ones where they're coming purely from the video to the ones that are on the internet because yep. they come through my website so we can count them. Um, and then we've also trialed a few cool things like a vlog as well, which uh, I've got the third one dropping next week. Get on it. Yeah. <laughs> There's a little plug for everyone out there. Tell us, Patty, uh, vlog. What what are you doing? So you're doing your property video. So what did you not were doing property videos last year? Is that the case? We were doing property videos last year, but this year we've tried to get away from me being the center of the the video, so to speak, and try and make the pro- more about the property. Um, like I noticed with a lot of videos out there, it becomes very much much about the agent. Yep. Um, it's very much the agent walking through the property, and the, the video follows the agent through the property. Yep. Whereas we try and just stick to me just talking about some of the great things about it, what I love about the property, all the three best things, and then letting the videographer just work the property as much as he can. Yeah, that's great. And remove yeah. myself from it, yeah. Um, and then the vlogs, they've been really, really cool. Like they're just more about trying to be really casual and um, getting to know me and my team and what I do and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> We've got Thomas giving the shucker in the background, hey? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I like his white shoes. I'm <laughs> oh, just saying, I think he's gone he back. From the Gold Coast? <laughs> <laughs> I think he thinks it's summer. Again. <laughs> it's summer. Go on. Yeah, go on, Patty. Sorry. Um, yeah, and like, I mean, that's what we've been doing, hey, Clinton. We've been um, just trying to make it really casual. We've been trying to steer really clear from that that sleek, shiny, like typical agent profile videos that you see. Yep. That are that are very scripted. They're all very off the hand. We've come up with like rules where we're not allowed to shoot a piece of content twice. Like we're not allowed to have a run at it. So if you make a mistake, you've just got to keep going. So it tries that's to make so it good. very like yeah. original and, and very and real, human. very authentic. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And that and how's that working for you so far? Is it coming across really well with the audience that you're pitching out to? Yeah, we send that. I send that to my entire database, um, and we also do a lot of Facebook boosting and things like that, which we're big on. Um, and what and sort of numbers what, have you been starting to review the analytics of the numbers? Yeah, some of the views that we're getting about 30,000 views a video. Wow, that's yeah. huge. Yeah, which is big. So, that's I mean, massive. If you think about that, just doing 10 or 12 a year, that's, that's 300,000, 360,000 people watching a video. What would that be, Clinton? The, what would the average be views? That, that sounds like way above the average. I think Pat could probably talk to this better than I can because once we've distributed – or given the content to, um, say, for example, a Patrick or even a Claudio, um, from there, I, I give a couple of pointers around what I think um, the guy should be doing. And then r- literally it's up to him how much he wants to spend on it and what he says is an average. But 
what I do see um, is if you're going to go and spend $100, let's have an example, you do $100 on every single video. All of a sudden now, if it is impactful content, like we're talking about content that um, people respond well to, you may see anywhere from um, 1,000 to 2,000 views on it. And if it works well, then you get quite a few likes and comments, right? So when you then amplify that and if you want to share, yeah. um, you know, you put a significant boost behind it, then that's where you start to get into those bigger numbers okay. like 20,000, 30,000. Wow. So, Paddy, is it fair to say um, the success of any idea is obviously it's in, in its implementation? Absolutely. And one thing that you've done is when you when you got some advice, you then went and implemented it. So, Clouds, you've been training people for years as I have. You yeah. saw more one-on-one, -on -one, me sort of my globally. Yeah, yeah, but absolutely. Um, it's amazing the great ideas that just never get implemented, isn't it? Yeah, I, I think what happens, Paddy um, – sorry, Paddy, Maddie. Maddie. <laughs> <laughs> um, a lot of people tend to think, ponder, and dwell on ideas, and and I think that's 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 the biggest thing. Um, working with a lot of different agents across the industry, one thing I know is the guys that are actually you know execute and they do it, and they don't they don't care if it fails or doesn't work, but they just keep doing. They it. They just right. go for it. Yeah, that's and, and what you've done, Pat. Yeah. Exactly. And you don't think at, about it. Exactly, and you look at any successful person, such as. You know, um, John Simons, mm. you know, Aussie Homeland. He went bankrupt, what, Matty, twice? Yeah, twice, times. yeah. Amazing you know, guy. And, and, you, and you know him personally yeah, as well, right? But he came back and, 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 and went out and had another crack, right? So and he just kept implementing. Like that's, that's he what he had is. an idea and kept going. And, and he would, you could imagine all the people that wouldn't have said Aussie Home Loans yeah. ever would have worked. Yeah. That's just not going to work. You're taking on the banks. Yeah, like, what yeah. the hell? It's impossible. And, and, and look I, what happened. And I think, you know, I always say this, like the safest place is the unsafest place. Mm. So if you're playing it safe all the time, you're never going to grow. No. And, you know, that really came to a bit of a realization for me today because I've just sort of committed to something for the next 12 months with a coach in wow. the US. Wow. Um, with my own business, yep. right? That's um, right. And, and let me tell you, it's not cheap. Like my wife said, you know, <laughs> that's like a family holiday happening every month. <laughs> she goes, you better make this work. And it was a big decision, big risk. But I'm excited. I'm excited because I want to give it a go. And I know all of my growth over the years has come from taking risks. Yeah, that's good. You know? Congratulations. Guys. No, no, no. no. And, and look, 12 months down the track, mate, I might not be talking to you. I might be living in a carpool box here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm <mean, somewhere laughs> <Sorry, laughs> With mate. my three kids. <laughs> We've got a couple of spare desks behind <laughs> us. <isn't laughs> what about a couple of spare rooms at your place? <laughs> but this is the thing, right? Um, we, we, we think about it. And one thing I've learned is this, Maddie. It's like, and, and this can go for everybody out there listening and including yourself, mm. Maddie, is that you know, I always look at things in three things. Like what's the best case scenario? What's the worst case scenario? And what's the most likely scenario? Worst case scenario for me in this position or you, Patrick, when, yeah. you, when you invest money, it's like, okay, you lose it. But what would it mean? The worst case scenario for me would be is I would may need to sell something or do something yeah, and, and start again, health. right? Yeah, and you can I've still- I've got my health. Yep. I've got my kids yep. and that's the main thing yeah. and my family. Totally right? my agree. Wife. So I think in, in life and, you know, you've certain, taken certain amounts of risk, Matty, the Absolutely. agency and so Yeah, forth. I've been taking risks since I started in real estate, yeah. um, doing things with sponsorships when I didn't have the money and yep. and a whole lot of things. But biggest risk I ever took was when I bought my first property, Pat. And, mm. um, you know, I think I remember putting $40,000 down on something that was worth 200000 yep. a two-bedroom unit in Coogee, believe it or not. That's yeah. what they were selling for back in 80, 90, 91. Yeah. And um, I put $40,000 down my whole life savings. I mm. looked at my mother and she said, you're looking really nervous. What's the problem? She said, you're, only bor you're borrowing, you know, 150000 or whatever yeah. it was. Yeah. And I said, mum, what if I can't afford to to have the repayments? What if I go? She goes, well, well, sell it. Yeah. And I went, because that just reminded you what you just said. Worst case scenario. She said, sell it. She said, but what about, have you ever thought if you can afford to make the repayments? Because we bought a property <laughs> like, we, we, bought a, we bought a property so 20 years ago yeah. for 60000 It's now worth two hundred. Mm. If you can hang on to this for, to, you know, she was saying for 10 years or whatever as a minimum, that, that you'll, you'll be, that'll be worth five hundred. I said, 500000 for a two-bedroom unit yeah. in Coogee. So those units now are selling for $1.2 million. That was 25 years ago I yeah, bought that unit. Yeah, Crazy. Yeah, go. And I've still go. got it, touch wood. But yeah. the reality of it is, is, I'll still think today, sell it if I have to. Exactly. Like you do. So, you know. You're not going to die, right? You're not going to die. You from are you thinking of selling it, are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for a good agent. <laughs> but, but I'll be on your doorstep. That's the whole thing, right? It's like, and I remember your mother, she was a beautiful lady, Maddie. No, thanks, and, 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 and great advice. Okay. And, and this is the thing where most people out there, they, they think and dwell and ponder on ideas or strategy or investing, you know, like, and that's the thing about Patrick. He's gone out there, he's taken a risk. No one else is really doing it in this space. 
but the person who has the most risk always wins. Yeah, Clinton, same with you. Look at the risk you've taken. I mean, mate, there's competition in your space galore, yep. yet you've carved a huge niche out in a short period of time Absolutely. because you're doing something different. Yep. You're prepared to back yourself. You yep. turn up. Well, what's the big criteria pattern in our business, right? Is you turn up, isn't it? That's 50% yeah. of the problem. Yeah, right? absolutely. Get these guys and girls running around, it's all too hard and they have a bad day and they want to, you know, go and take a week off, go on holidays, go do this, go. They're the ones that are always playing catch up. It's it, 50% of the problem in this business I've seen in the last 30 years is turning up consistently. Yeah. And, you know, I, 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 can't, I actually have never had a day off, sick day off in real estate that I can actually remember. I think I've had probably two or three days off that weren't holidays, both of them when my kids were born. Yeah. Because um, I just don't like, you know, people go down with the flu and all sorts of stuff. I, I get that because you don't want to infect other people. But I think people take excuses to stop and drop out because it's a mental strength. This is a game of mental strength, isn't the, it? The, the key the there is consistency, I think. Consistency. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like so keep showing up. It's, showing up's 50. But if you just turn up, something's going to happen, right? Mm. We all know that. Turn up, open a property for inspection, something will happen. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I mean, one, yeah. of the, one of the awesome things about getting to work with so many good agents is seeing how different people operate. Yeah. Right? One of the standouts with um, Patrick and what I see with him is – He's in a position where he loves what he does. He can maintain yeah, consistency quite problem. well. Yeah. Um, and you ask the guy, like he works seven days a week. Right. Mm. I can't do that. I've got a family. Mm. I know what my limits are and he jokes with me all the time about mm. it. Um, um, but like I work within my own constraints with what I can and can't do but I've picked something that I love doing and therefore mm. I go all in on it. And what that also means is when I see an opportunity, I try it more than happy to fail and learn from it and value that experience more than just having an idea and never doing anything with it. Yeah, there's an old saying, if, if you um, love what you do, you never work a day in your life or something. Is that the saying? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly right. Exactly right. And so um, whenever somebody takes up content and they start doing content um, and you see how much work they put into it, there's mm. a few people in the game that are like, right, cool, I can see there's opportunity in marketing myself mm. and doing video content like mm. Patrick has. But the guy's consistent. Right, so some people will come. They'll do one video and then they drop off for a couple of months, and then oh, it didn't work. Yep. But in Patrick's case, it's like every single month, as many properties as possible, and like talk me through the numbers. Like I haven't even had this conversation with you, but if you've if you've had thirty thousand on one video, have you gone through and counted the results on the other ones? I haven't actually sat down and counted them all. We should do that actually one time. But hundred percent, it's it's amazing to think like. You know, if you think, say, let's say 300,000, just an easy number, at the end of the year, you've watched all of our vlogs. Mm -hmm. how, how much would that cost to drop our DL cards to, to, yeah. to 300,000 people? And you're not getting, <laughs> and it's something you can't reuse, no. the DL card. No. You can keep reusing this. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And, Patty, what the shift for you, because when we did sit down, I'm trying to just recollect what was said, but um, um, we, you were talking about, you, you were doing the traditional old way of letterbox drops. Yeah, drop. letterbox drops. Have you still doing that or you've, 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 you've not, noticed that it's not in, with stop? Not really stop anymore. Like it's more, yeah. we more text and phone call people when we've listed something in their street or we send them a handwritten note Great saying idea. we've just list, listed yeah. something in your street. Why don't you pop through for the first open as a sneak preview? Mm. So it's more targeted rather than doing the sort of the big spray. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, we've we've sort of been researching into a few foundations and stuff like that as to what we're going to get involved to because we haven't actually picked one of those like to get involved with the community and we're trying to find something that the team is and when I said the team, me, Ellie and Jordan are all passionate about and at the moment there's um there's one actually foundation we're looking at which is it's sort of like it has to do with cancer and things like that because mm. we've all have friends and family members that we've yeah. lost so it's something that we we, we want to choose something that we're really passionate about because I think there's no there's no point of um, choosing like a, a, a fair or something like that because we thought about doing like a, a suburb fair yep. and just trying to pick something that goes to our heart, so to speak. Yeah. So yeah. we actually but do can, generally want to get involved. That, something you feel aligned to, something yeah. you're connected with. Yeah, and that can help community. change people's lives. Yeah. yeah. I think that's super important, Maddie. Mm. Like um, part of marketing plans is when you do get involved with the community, it's absolutely – I think it's paramount that you actually believe in what you're doing. Yeah, It's totally. not just putting – you not, know, mm, uh, not just sponsoring a the soccer, mm. you know, team and putting a name and number on the back of some jersey and then hoping that something's going to come out of it. It's like you've got to be passionate about soccer. You've got to be passionate about kids, um, et cetera. And, 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 and it's not about, you know, putting a name and uh, on a jersey and then hopefully someone's going to give you a call from that. 
Yeah, look, there's two mm. parts. There are some um, strategic business alliances you can do, like obviously surf clubs, things like that are good because they're little kids sort of yeah. growing and yeah. and then you say you're indirectly saving lives, you're putting money into yeah. things where they can improve their services. There's things like that you might not – it looks like an advertising thing but it does – the money goes to good too. Yeah. But cancer is one of those ones where you, everyone will put money in for to do yeah. cancer. You know? Yeah, totally. And so you, it's a good thing because if you're passionate about – if you've been touched by – it, like I have personally, but um, if you have been touched by it, it's something you just want to eradicate. It's a terrible disease. Yeah, you know? mm. and yeah. It's, a, it's it's one of those words when people mention it, it's like people start to shake. Yeah, it. yeah. You know, it, you know, one of those diseases when people yeah. mention it, you well, see. Well, it was the, close to home for you too. Yeah, 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 yeah. My mum died of it. Uh, oh yeah. right, yeah, absolutely. Oh, right. Um, yeah, died of it over five years too. So it's one of those diseases you you never beat it, but you can prolong it but it's always going to get you sort mm. of scenario certain the type she had breast into bone which is painful um but um yeah no i'm sort of so very aware of it family i've had lots of colleagues over the years where their mums and dads and i know two or three now in, in the business here that their family have got it so yeah well it's yeah. important mm. yeah. yeah give back to the community oh, well done mate on that yeah Good. yeah that's that's what i was thinking mm. and then the other one i think we spoke about was um uh, like uh, clients and stuff, giving back to your clients, your top yeah. clients, your past yeah. vendors. 100%. Like client appreciation yeah. party. So I was, I was thinking about having like a bit of a, a drinks thing at the end of the year or something like that. Yep. Um, and then also I've been sort of sharing them with a few gifts throughout the year. Like yep. we, we gave them a, um, a gift at the end of last year, sort of like a New Year's gift. Yes. And then we gave them another one, sort of some chocolates to the top clients um, over Easter. Yep. Um, and then we're thinking about um, a New Year's Eve gift or sort of a, a new financial year gift. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. Um, which we're thinking about. But it's amazing just like the response you get when you just give something and don't ask for anything back. That's exactly. Yeah. Um, do, yeah, so do, out of the blue. do everything with no expectation. Yeah. As soon as you, you think about expectation, you lose the game. Yeah, mm-hmm. the big the, companies like Lexus, Mercedes-Benz, the car companies have really ma- – Audi have mastered the art of that. Mm. Yeah. Every now and then you'll see a key ring pop up or something like yeah. that. Um, yeah. You know, if, you know, like a pen or something. Just a little thing which reminds them you they're, that they're still there. Yeah. Correct. And they value the relationship. Shit. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Exactly. So doing gifts with no expectation is massive, mm. absolutely massive, you know. So, mate, good on you. So the next six months, so your year's gone really well. How many sales yeah, have you done so far? It's, it's been really good, yeah. We've just, I just exchanged my 14th property just last week, well which done. is really good, yeah. That's calendar good year. Or thing. Yeah, that's calendar, calendar year. year. Excellent. Yeah, good. yeah. So, um, and, uh, but yeah, the, the, just like the videos, like when we started doing this, like I hated doing videos. I hate seeing myself in a video, you know. There's nothing worse. Or, or <laughs> seeing this, yourself in camera. Too. Oh, yeah. I get couldn't. It, I used to stand at the other end of the office when they'd play it and I'd just watch it from a distance <laughs> and be like, oh, I think that's me <laughs> when we'd proof them. But um, yeah. it does get easier. Like and if you just stick with it, like planning for like the, when we do the videos and stuff, if you plan them ahead of time and stuff, sort of the ideas of what you want to do, it does get easier as time goes on, doesn't it? It's yeah. interesting, Patty. You're doing sort of roughly two a month. Take January out, I suppose. Mm. You, to go to three a month, it's really then becomes easier. Mm. Have you noticed when you're doing more opens? Yeah, when the it snowball. becomes easier yeah. to do more opens. Yeah, people are saying, "Oh, how will I do five or six opens on a yeah. weekend or seven or eight, whatever?" When you're doing, I reckon it's harder to do one or two. Yeah. Than, yeah. Do you agree, Claire? Absolutely, hundred percent. As I just remember when I used to yeah. do it, the more because it got momentum. Going, okay, I got yeah. this, and the buyers used to follow you. So yeah. I'd say, "Look, I'm going here next. I'm going here next. I'm going here next," and yeah. it was easy. You're just dealing with the same sort of people. Yeah. You know? Totally, and I think that's where you, when you got momentum. The last thing you want to do is get lazy. Oh yeah, because I see agents get lazy when yeah. they got momentum. They think they've and made they, it. They, You've they've never made, made it. it. Yeah, 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 exactly. And then they lose their momentum again. Versus going, yeah. you know what? This is an opportunity now. I've got momentum. Let's yeah. see how how can I build? Like you're saying, going from the two to three, yeah. then you go to three to five and six yeah. and seven, etc. So, yeah, no, totally. No, nah, absolutely. So, mate, thanks for joining us back. Thanks for having <laughs> me, guys. Have fun. <laughs> <laughs> On episode is it seventeen? Episode seventeen. Um, and and if you haven't catched it, listeners. You can go back to episode number three. So Patrick joined us there. His, his, his question was around his marketing plan for Seems 2018. Like and it's just ago, awesome <laughs> that, you know, roughly six months ago, you know, part of it you've changed is getting into more digital, getting less out of print, doing more social media strategy. It's obviously getting your name out there, 30,000 views, which is absolutely massive, Patty. Um, just to wrap up, what's your plan for the next six months now just to – in terms of your marketing plan? Obviously, you've got digital, you've got social media. Is it more just finishing off now, getting on the community it's, involved, or it's trying to get the community involved? Definitely mm-hmm. upping the upping the past clients, um, 
and just giving back to like, especially like the people, like the referrers and stuff. Yep. Who've sent me a lot. Um, and just trying to be really consistent. Yeah. That's beautiful. what it's about, really. Yeah. And what sort of gift do you give? Just so we know. So some of the listeners are thinking, what, what could I give a past client or maybe oh, um, someone who refers you a lot of business? What would- I've given them hampers. I've given out um, like coffee table books. Yep. I've uh, given them chocolates, um, coffee vouchers, movie vouchers, uh, car washes. We've right. given that a lot. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Good. Beautiful. Candles are always a good thing because yeah, yeah. people leave them on. They don't necessarily burn them or that. They stay there and stays like, yeah. on a, yeah. like with you. I, I, I remember, I might have said this to you, I'm not sure, but I remember one, it could have been Steve Chen years ago, Matty. He used to give his VIP clients a free car wash. Yep. And yep. they'd go in there to get there. But, but you know, I love getting someone gives me a free car wash. Yeah, yeah I know. Because, you know, my son complains when he washes my car. But, yeah. you know, <laughs> but just to get like something like that, getting a free car wash. Mm. Um, and, and I remember Steve was saying at the time, Steve Chen was, would say, yeah, my top 20 VIPs. They get a free car wash. Yeah. And they go down there. And so other good. time he'd be washing his second car or something and uh, he'd be having a cup of coffee and meeting his mm. his clients while he's down there. So good. Absolutely. Yeah. That's a great idea. Okay. All right. One more. One more yeah. So Patty, um, I I find that a lot of agents are sort of like in a position where they're like, what content should I do or how do I get started? Mm. Being through it in the last six months, what would you say got you from not doing it to now doing it? What would be your biggest piece of advice? Just start. Um, just come up with an idea, um, however big, however small it may be, and just start. Um, and it just sort of goes from there because once you've done, like the first one we did, we were just like, let's just shoot anything. Yeah. And then we did something and then we were like, oh, I've actually got another idea. As soon as you'd finished it, we were like, we've got other ideas. Yeah. And we did the second one. And by the time we did the second one, I think now we've got like seven or eight ideas. Yeah. Like we've got seven or eight other plans for the future. And just they come to you. I was driving the car and I was like, I should get Clinton into the gym. And, 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 I, and I called Clinton and I was like, Clinton, do you want to come to the gym with me at, at 4.30 a.m.? And he's like, uh. <laughs> Clinton gets up at about nine. I'm <laughs> no, just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's awesome. I don't reckon he sleeps. I've had emails from him at like 2 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he gets up at nine. No, just kidding. All right. Well, um, Patty, thanks so much for joining us here on The Mentors, episode 17. Mate, uh, we may check in with you once again, maybe sometime early next year yeah. to see how the whole year panned out for you in 2018 with your marketing plan. Wonderful. And thanks for sharing and coming back and joining us right here, my friend. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me. Okay. Well done, Pat. Congratulations. Well done. Thanks, Patty. Got something great from this episode? It would mean the world to us if you passed it on. Tune in each week as we mentor a new agent. Have a question? Want to be on the show? Get in touch with Claudio Encina, Matt LaHood, or visit our Facebook page. The Mentors is brought to you by Sprinkler.media.